Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it is the Ramsey Show where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Talking about the real thing. I am your host, Jade Warshaw. I am joined by maybe my favorite co-host ever, Dr. John Deloney over here to my right. We're going to have a good time. Give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. We'll talk about your life. We'll talk about your money. We'll talk about your mental health and wellness. But before we get into that, Dr. John, we were just in the NYC. We were in New York City this morning. Party in the USA. (laughs) We were partying in the USA. We were in New York um, for a media dinner. We got to sit and hang out with a whole bunch of cool folks yesterday. And then we did some media this morning. And then we got on a plane and flew here just in time to... Save America. I'm like pinching myself. Somebody has to. Good grief. I'm like, what is happening? I I went on social media yesterday and I was like, all right, you know, come check out the TV. We'll be on Fox News with, you know, America's newsroom. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Then this morning I was like, hey, come check out the TV. We'll be on here with Fox and Friends. I was like, wow, that's (laughs) crazy. Our life is just really been cool and it's all thanks to you guys uh thanks for listening to the show thanks for sharing the show thanks for tuning in whenever we talk we couldn't do it without you guys and without further ado we got to take it to the phone lines we got jessica in nyc we just came from there jessica what's going on yeah hi well thanks for visiting us (laughs) it was fun um i bet um so i am my husband and i are trying to start to prepare for my retirement um in approximately five years Mm mm-hmm um, I am a teacher locally, and I will be retiring with a large pension, mm-hmm. approximately $100,000 a year. Um, but I also have an opportunity to get a lump sum, um, mm-hmm. which is quite significant. How do you determine what is the best course of action, whether to take the pension? And I know Dave usually says to take the lump sum, mm-hmm. but due to me being so young and potentially um, – being able to collect for an extended period of time and get spousal benefits for my husband. Yeah. I just want to know, is there a calculator or a formula that you use to, um, to pick? Yeah. You know, I, all I can tell you is what I would do and I'll tell you the reason why I would do it. And then if you have some information that kind of contradicts that, feel free to share it. Um, the reason I would take the lump sum and in my case, you being a little bit younger is actually a good thing because I would take the lump sum and then I would get with a smart vester pro and I'd reinvest it. And you are going to get a better rate reinvesting it in good growth stock mutual funds across the four types that we teach. You're going to get a better rate of return than you were ever getting with your pension. Um, because even the way we teach it, we say like, hey, we we suggest for people to invest 15 percent of their income. Right. But if somebody calls in here and says, hey, uh, I've got a pension and I'm putting you know 10 percent into it. Does that count as 10 percent? We tell them no. Count it for like five percent. And we say that because of the re- the rate of return that you're likely getting on that pension. And so in your case, if I were you, you're gonna walk away with so much more money because if you get with the right investor and in the right funds, you're gonna have an awesome rate of return. I mean, what are you, 50? Uh, I will be 50 this year. So I have um, about five more school years after this one. Oh yeah, that's great. And I mean, you're gonna retire, but I'm sure you're gonna go on to do other things. It's not like- I'm gonna work. I'm a worker. Yeah, I can tell. So there's no, no doubt that I'm not gonna work. But I am concerned because my husband is not going to have a pension or a retirement. We uh-huh. do have a 403B, but I am concerned to make sure that I am preparing for him and leaving a legacy for my kids. 100%. If you take the lump sum, how much is it? Um, It's estimated at $1.33 million. Girl! I would do it right now. Yep. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you two other <laughs> things. <laughs> let me tell you two other things. Um, The first one is you are never guaranteed tomorrow. Right. And I wouldn't have a job if everybody lived to to be 95 years old, right? And before this, I spent a lot of time in homes in the middle of the night hugging husbands because their wives had passed away. From And I have had health issues. Okay. issues. I'm a cancer survivor from 36. So. so if you imagine your kids and your husband, you've got this incredible pension that makes you're getting paid six figures, and then you get sick, and then something happens, and then they're out. And he's 60 years old with nothing versus you got this so i it almost feels safer to me to know i've got a million dollars in the bank that is going to compound every seven years if invested properly it's going to double and so you're thinking man if i live 21 more years right just to the average Mm. um it'd be a little below average then you would have three four four million dollars right four and a half i mean so you see what i'm saying 
minus whatever yeah. y'all withdrew. So I'd pull it out. Here's the second thing I would tell you. And I'm just telling you this, like if I was sitting across the table from my mom, I personally, I don't have any secret info, but I don't see a path forward for all these pensions to pay out as they've promised, similar to Social Security. They've been so heavily leveraged and borrowed against Mm -hmm. and bonded out. I don't trust the fact in 30 years they're going to be paying what they are. I just, I just, I don't see a path forward. Especially with our grownups in Congress acting like children throwing crayons at each other. I just don't see it. John, you make a good point. And that's a good thing to remember, Jessica, is A, a pension can die with you. Like, and you mentioned wanting to take care of your family. So that's one thing. Or if your company goes under, that also puts your pension down the tubes. If so, one day New York had, we were just there and everyone we talked to talked about how New York hasn't come back yet, the real estate, um, you know, all those shuttered first floors of all those buildings that used to be just hopping. If it would not surprise me if New York has to um, sit down with a union and negotiate and it'd be a bloody battle and you know it would be, but I just don't, I don't see a path forward 30 years from now. Now, hopefully I'm wrong. I would do anything to be wrong. Um, but man, I'd much rather have $1.1 million in my checking account that's under my control that I get to decide what happens to down the road than to hope New York makes good choices because <laughs> they have, don't have a great track record. So Jessica, you're going to take that money. Get with that Smart Investor Pro. You're going to invest it across four types. We teach this all the time. 25% into each category. You got growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. That's what you want to do. That is the path forward. Do you have any questions? Well, what if we wanted to take some of that money and purchase some real estate? Uh, I would as ask. Landlord, since I'm going to hustle anyway. I would ask if you are in baby step seven. And if you are, I would say, yes, do that. It becomes part of well, your, your portfolio. Time, you yeah. At that time, you we will be? be. Yes, that's the well, way to do it. We're going to relocate and get off of Long Island, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's the way to do it. When you're in baby step seven, you pay cash for real estate and you become even wealthier than you already are, which is pretty dang incredible. I love calls like that, John. It's awesome. Very cool. And thank you for being a teacher. And I'm looking at the statistics, um, Jade and Jessica. Thank you for not just quitting this year i know that's you're gonna right. ride out for five more years thank you those kids in new york are lucky to have you yeah and you're modeling for them what a hard worker looks like and a thinker looks like i'm so grateful that's yeah. awesome in more ways than one i yeah. love how she's wanting to take care of her family i love when people really dial into um their money not just for the now but for the future because the the choices we make can cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars right. when it comes to investing what we're looking at what we're not looking at so i always admire when people are smart enough and diligent enough Uh, and intentional enough to call in and really get the right advice for their money. Hey, and by the way, this is just an N equals one experiment, but my parents both changed careers in their 50s, and they are incredible into their 70s. Mm -hmm. So your husband says he's not going to have anything. He could if he chose right now to start doing something different. It's not too late. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey.
What's going on, everybody? You're listening to The Ramsey Show. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw, joined by John Deloney. Give us a call. We'd be happy to take your call. We'll discuss whatever you want to, as long as it has something to do with your money or your mental health. John over here is really the best guy to talk about mental health and wellness. Tell him what you do, John. I'm not the best guy. There's some really good ones out there. But I- we'll talk to you about your relationships, mental health, whatever's going on in your world, your emotional health. Life has gotten sideways for everybody. Yeah. And it's a mess. It's yeah. a mess. I like the way you talk about things, though, because for me, there's no, like, lingo. Like, it's not over uh, my head. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can do that. Like, that's me. He's talking to me. So that's one of the things I like I about the way that. you speak to the people, John, including me. I'm one of those people. But give us a call, 888-825-5225, and we'll chop it up. We got Ashley in Columbus, Ohio. What's going on, Ashley? Hi. How are you both? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little nervous. So I wrote down my question. That's awesome. Um, just a slight, just a slight background. I've had three surgeries in a year and a half. So the fact that John Deloney's on here talking about mental health, these yeah. surgeries have definitely weighed on me mentally. Mm-hmm. Um, because of that, we slid back into baby step two due to all of the medical bills um, that we accrued with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were making really great headway until earlier this month, we received a letter in the mail stating that we had a $2,000 bill that was about to go into collections. Um, We had never received notice of this bill prior. Mm -hmm. Um, So when we inquired more about it, um, it was from 2021 to two years ago for physical therapy for my first surgery. Mm -hmm. Um, We got negotiated down from the 2000 to about 1300. Okay. Um, However, we're having a problem with the office giving us a final bill in writing Mm. that that is our going to be our final notice. And I don't want to be on the hook for $600 when I can't get anything in writing. And honestly, I just want these medical bills gone for for my mental, can you, uh, my mental health and well-being. Have you driven over there? Um, I have, um, and I've talked to a supervisor and they said, we'll give you dates that, you know, that it went over, it came down to a dispute from my prior insurance and my prior employer. Um, But they're not willing to give me anything in writing other than the date. And the most recent bill we got was 1800. So it came down a little bit, but I'm afraid, again, we're going to be on the hook for all of that if we can't get something in writing. Do you have it? I have a voicemail from them. No, 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 no. Do you have $1,800? Um, not really. We've got our thousand dollar emergency fund and slightly over that. We have about twelve and so we're working pretty quickly to get all of that. You, um you said the bill was in collections. You said the bill was in collections, right? No, it was the final notice prior to collection. Okay, got it, got it. Um Let me tell you what I would do and Jade, tell me if I'm wrong. I'll do just about anything for peace in my home. And mm-hmm. I would probably um, as your husband, as your neighbor, as your somebody that went to church with you, as as your as your sister, I would go drive Uber. I would go babysit. I'd go wash cars. I'd go do something and scrounge scrounge up this money and just pay the stupid bill and be done. Move on. I it's so yeah, it, and that's it, what my husband and I talked about as well. I it's just not worth my soul. Now my friend George Campbell would he would he would get a tent. And it'd be a very bougie, nice tent, because that's how he rolls. But he would go park it in front of the hospital, and he would, or in front of the PT place, and he would sit there every day until they finally... So that's how he rolls. So everybody's different. I personally, if they, did the, if they actually did the therapy, and they did the work that they're claiming that they did, I would pay them the money and be done with it. I'd try to yep, figure out a way to I make it happen. Well. And here's the other thing. You know this as well as I do. One of the things that surgery... The mental health toll surgery takes is there's that scary sense that my body let me down, right? There's something about me that's not working right. And then there's that pervasive pain that hurts all the time. And they work you through therapy to slowly take teeny tiny little baby steps with that pain. One of the ways you regain trust in yourself is not through standing in front of the, standing in front of the mirror and manifesting. It's a whole bunch of little wins. Mm. And my promise is if you and your husband scrounge and scratch and claw and get 1800 bucks and just get this stupid thing paid over, paid out, even though it's going to cost you some time, you're going to miss some t-ball games, you're going to miss whatever, you will stand a little bit taller. Mm-hmm. That's a path, right? You'll have little step, little step, little step, boom, y'all are done, you're out of our life. And then you'll say, all right, we did it. And then that will catapult you into getting back to baby steps three and four and on. 
Okay. Yeah, and that's that's kind of was our second um, kind of our fallback. Like, hey, if we have no choice but to pay the eighteen hundred, and we don't take the discount, then that's kind of the end of the the story with that, and we move on to the next medical bill. Um, and I agree with what you said. It, you know, I do feel like my body has failed me since it's it's my story. That's that's how literally it's exactly how I feel. Yeah. Mm. And one of the best ways to get confidence back in your body is to slowly begin to use it again, right? Both intellectually, yeah. both working really hard towards a towards a purpose purposeful goal, and doing physical things, right? And it's just one of those things that it you you feel like I'm going to do this workout and tomorrow I'm going to feel like a million bucks, and you don't. You look in the mirror and you kind of look the same. It's the little bitty things that accumulate over time, and then suddenly something's going to happen, and you're going to be strong, and you're going to think, "Oh wow, I'm back!" Right? It's awesome. It just takes a yeah. t- bunch of little steps over and over and over, and it's discipline, and it's annoying, and it's slow, and it just mm-hmm. happens, and it happens, and you're all going to get there and get it done. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I'd pay it. Um, I want you to keep every piece of paperwork on this. I want you to keep this paper trail, especially if it's been inconsistent. The thing that's probably consistent is the account number. So there'll be if there's ever a discrepancy, you'll be able to see, hey, this account went from two thousand to eighteen hundred. I paid it. You know, you'll always be able to see that. So always keep the paperwork, um, especially if you are dealing with a collections uh, company. You definitely want to keep the paperwork because those jokers will come back, you know, five, six, seven years later talking about you didn't pay because you made a settlement. So always keep the paperwork. Always in a file folder. And do not give them your checking account number. They're going to ask you for the routing number so they can just um, direct withdraw it. Do not. Oh, that's such a good point. Don't, don't, yeah. don't. Send a money order or have your bank wire it. But do not, do not, do not, do not, do not give them your inf- information because you'll have money leaking out of your account for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Yeah, in this case, definitely a case. All right, let's go to Manuel. Oh, no, let's go to Naya. She's in Orlando, Florida. What's going on, Naya? Hi, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you? Good. Um, So I just had a question. Uh, Me and my husband just recently decided uh, to do the baby steps. Um, We, uh, um, our income just recently dropped because we lost his job Mm. uh, from like 80,000 to 50,000. And we were already kind of like living paycheck to paycheck uh, before that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I wanted to know if we should catch up on past due bills first before uh, saving an emergency fund? Um, or do we do the emergency fund catch up on past due bills and then go into paying the debt? Okay, uh, so, yeah. So I, want, um, I do want you to do the baby steps in the order. I do want you to get, because here's the thing, that $1,000, if you don't have that money, you're going to just go, you're, you're just going to go more and more into debt and these things are going to get more and more past due. But the key to making this work, because I don't want you to rob Peter to pay Paul, the key to making this work is mm-hmm. you've got to get that income back up. Um, he lost his job. What's he doing in the meantime? Um, I have, uh, he's been kind of working my business. Um, I have a bakery. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Are you like, paying him? We literally, no. <laughs> um, okay. The money that we get, so the it started off as a hobby, like literally since we needed extra money, like I literally popped a tin out in my front yard in That's the house, great. and we just sell like cupcakes and stuff to the neighborhood and whoever walks past. That's um, great for you, Naya. But so, right now, right now he's got to get a job that pays. I want money. him applying to like eight jobs today. And this is not the, the be all end all. This is whatever's local, this Home Depot, this Amazon, this is whatever he can get very quickly and start making money very, very quickly. I'm going to give you a couple of numbers so you see how quickly this needs to happen. The average person gets their thousand dollars saved in 30 days. That means you're selling stuff. That means you are working day and night. That means if cupcakes are making you a little bit of money, but you can make more money doing Instacart, this week and this month you're doing Instacart. Stop stop, stop making cakes. Yeah. Right now we're doing whatever's going to make us the most money because not only do you need to get this thousand saved, you got to get caught up on your bills. And if it's rent, we're getting caught up on that one first. If it's IRS, we're doing that one second. Then we're working the debt snowball. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling? 
When you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer, you need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw, your co-host with, together with, Dr. John Deloney. <laughs> We're taking your calls all afternoon long, 888-825-5225. We're going to do it up with the neighborly question of the day. Today's question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly is your one place to find reliable HVAC, plumbing, and electrical providers near you. Brands like AirServe, Mr. Rooter, Mr. Electric have local professionals ready to help. So stop wasting time scrolling through pages of results when you can just visit neighborly.com today. All right. Today's question comes from Josh in Oregon. Josh writes, I have no debt except for the house and I have one credit card. I've never paid a penny of credit card interest. I treat it like a debit card and pay it off every two to three days. Next year, my husband and I will accrue $12,000 in medical bills due to having a baby and my husband's medical condition, meaning our insanely high max out of pocket. My brother recently showed me a few credit cards that have a $1,000 bonus if you spend $4,000 in the first three months. Since we have medical bills and the cash to pay the bills, he suggested we get the credit card and use it to pay our bills. Get the credit card bonuses and immediately pay it off with cash. I know you're very against credit cards, but what is your opinion on this? Go. You called the wrong show. (laughs) Um, Yeah, dude. You called the wrong show. And I think that you should go with your first instinct because you said, basically, what does it say, John? She said that she knows that we don't do credit cards, right? I think she said that on there. Except, Except, hold on, she's special. She's special. And there's a medical condition, a baby. Oh, so she's the exception to the rule. Correct. He, oh, yes, well, yes, yes, yes. in that case, <laughs> I'm still going to have the same advice that we always have. No credit cards. I would never, ever, ever, and this is being real, I would never, ever, ever suggest anybody to use a credit card, really ever. The only time is if for some reason they had like a, maybe if they were upside down on a car, right? And their credit was shot. And so they couldn't go to a credit union, you know, to get a little extra money to get out of that upside down situation. Then maybe I'd say, okay, do it on a credit card, right? Because you're going from a large amount of debt to a much, much smaller amount of debt. That is the only time you would probably ever hear me say the words, here's how you could use a credit card. But in this situation, you have money. You have money and a thousand dollars to shuffle around debt in order to get a thousand dollars in, in, in the time it took me to answer this call, you could find a more productive way to make $1,000. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So here's my two um, here's my two challenges with this. I actually get the math on it. Yeah, like, the math is fine. You, you'll make your money. Cool. As- assuming everything goes according assuming to plan, Assuming everything goes John. perfectly, right? So I know the stress of having a baby. I know the stress of having medical conditions. I don't know why anyone would elect to add additional stress to to that situation. Mm, I know. To add more chaos. Like, okay, we got to remember to pay this one off because this one's got a thousand. Then we're going to roll this one over to the four thousand. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to spend this in the three months. We've got to make sure we get this bill back. Mm-hmm. I don't know why anyone would do that. That's number one. Okay. But that's not enough for the math, the math folks. Mm-hmm. I get that too. It's everything is worth it if you get that thousand dollars or the whatever. Here's my beef these credit card companies are not your friend. And so you are the rare. And when I say rare, you're an albino unicorn, okay? You don't exist in their world because if people like you existed in mass, they would close. They'd go bankrupt. They wouldn't exist. You pay it off every two to three days. Cool. So that $1,000 bonus you're going to get is going to be paid for with late charges by that single mom who cannot breathe in southern Arizona whose husband just left her and she 
can't see the light of day. Somebody's paying that thousand bucks and it sure as crap ain't the credit card company. And if it's not you, it's people that they've been preying on, that they are desperate. That's why I quit using them when it came to airline points. I've, I travel all over the place. It makes perfect sense for me. I'll just get reimbursed and I'll get all these free miles. And it occurred to me, wait a minute, those flights aren't free. I love flying Southwest, but they are not my friend. They're a great service that I give money to. So somebody's paying for those flights and we dug into it. It's people who are in deep, terrifying financial trouble. And those are the folks that call the show every day. Those are the folks that email us and DM us every day. And they're literally dying inside. Mm. That's a, that's, I'm not going to let a single mom who can't breathe pay for me to have a thousand dollars in bonus cash or a Mm -hmm. free flight to Dallas. I refuse to be a part of that game. I love that. I I actually really like that way of thinking about it. Um, and I think that probably if you were to take a poll of all the various Ramsey folks here, we'd all have a different reasoning for the credit cards. And I love that reason. That's definitely something to chew on. Um, my reasoning is slightly different, but similar but different. My reasoning behind it, I mean, we can get into math stuff and, you know, debt and all of that, but mine is, and and you can tell me what you think about this, John. I don't like a company who a a mass majority of their profit and revenue is based on people defaulting. Failing. Failing. Their customer has to fail for them to make money. Their customer has to fail for them to make money. Of course, they get money on transactional fees and all these other things, but the money that they accrue in late fees and overbalance I'm like, wait a second, because I can go, there's plenty of companies out there. I can go to Jordan brand and buy a pair of shoes and I don't have to fail in any way in order to get the service. That's right. Like I can go over to Publix, use their you know grocery store service or Instagram and or Instacart, you know, grocery shopping app. I don't have to fail in any way to get value from their service. Anytime a business is main profit source is the failure of their customer. Think Blockbuster. I mean, they didn't make money on renting movies. They made money on your late fees. Yeah. You had to lose. You have to lose. For them to win. They will go away. Yeah. If you provide a service like an incredible shoe yeah. that has value, that looks cool. And we're just here whatever. to serve you. We here, want to give you fashion. I'll give you my money. You give me fashion, yeah. right? That's a fair it's trade. A transaction. Yeah. But if they fall apart or if when the new Jordans came out, if they suddenly pushed a button, like maybe one uh, fruit company that makes cell phones does. Apple. And they push the secret button and your phone starts working out as well. Yes. Right? Yes, the big red button. They only make money when their customers fail. Yeah, I have a major problem with too. that. I do too. And then, okay, let's keep, let's keep rolling this out because we got time on this clock, John. So there's that part. Let me tell you my next part about credit cards. They get into your psyche and they have told us for decades – you can't exist without us. And so brick by brick, they've torn down our confidence to be able to handle money as individuals because they've said, hey, your paycheck's not enough. You working hard 40 hours a week is not enough. You need supplement. You need extra. You need more. You need to be able to keep up. And here's how you can do that. We'll give you this piece of plastic. We'll loan you our money at insane interest rates. And now, there you go. Now you're good. Go play. And so now we talk to folks all the time who call in and they're like, Jade, I'm terrified. I'm terrified to cut up my credit card. It has nothing to do with um, I want to get the points and the rewards and this. No, I'm just scared that I won't be able to manage my money without the safety net that I've had in my life for 5, 10, 15 years. That's crazy. And I hate that a company has had the ability to destroy our confidence in that way to just go, oh, yeah, yeah. If I mean, if I make $3,000 a month, I just... I can only spend $3,000 a month. Like I can go into, I have the confidence to say, I go into the grocery store and I just only spend $200. Mm. I have the ability to tell myself no. And I have the ability to say, oh, if I say this is the goal and this is the plan, yeah, I'm confident that I can stick to that. But we've totally wiped that out of our consciousness and out of our confidence. And now we're like, oh, I don't think I can say no. Like, I don't think that I can actually stick to this. I better keep that piece of plastic as my fail safe. Mm. So that's that's argument number three. You got another I one? Got a, I got a number four. Let's go. So they're going to give you a $1,000 bonus if you spend 4000 in the first three months. Mm-hmm. Cool. What they're banking on is that you're going to spend $4,000 in the first three months. Mm-hmm. They're going to give you a 1000 bucks. Mm-hmm. They'll get that money back. Oh, yeah. They will get that money back. And here's how. The research shows you spend more money Boom. when you're swiping plastic than when you're paying with cash. Or even coming out of your debit card. 
Yes. And so you might pay this thing off every two to three days, but your expenses are higher percentage wise than if you were just carrying cash around. That's right. Because it doesn't doesn't matter. You're going to pay it off later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they're going to get their $1,000 back in transaction fees that you otherwise wouldn't be spending. They're going to get their Come money on, back. John. Opt out of the game. Yes. Don't play with predators, man. Do not play the game. We're not playing with you guys when it comes to these credit cards. We are only going to tell you what we know to be true. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost-sharing ministry. But listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. You are listening to The Ramsey Show. I am Jade Warshaw. This is John Deloney. We're with you all afternoon. Give us a call, 888-825-5225. We just came from New York City uh, where we do something really cool there, John. Um, You know, we get the opportunity to go on different people's television shows, news networks, podcasts, and there's a lot of people that go into making that happen. So many folks behind the scene, producers and bookers and all these people. And I think Ramsey does something really cool by hosting a dinner to just say thank you to just appreciate all the people that let us let us near them and let us on their airwaves and trust us and it was really cool to see that um how much goes into that and so in the spirit of that i really just want to say thank you to those listening now thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast the youtube channels everything i mean the fact of the matter is John and I would be unemployed if it were not <laughs> for you. And so we're just super duper grateful. Um, I don't think we say it enough. Thank you. And let's um, let's let's show pe- show people a little bit behind the curtain. Um, he would never do this on the air, but Dave's a gruff guy on the air and he's let's, tells it like it is, you know. It's when you see Dave um, in the 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 lower basement of a building in the way he interacts with and tips the bellhops mm. in the shadows that nobody will ever see. Yeah. And the way he said 10 years ago, man, we're going to all these people's shows and there's the, the hosts in front of the cameras, mm-hmm. but there's all these people behind the scenes making this thing happen. And their life is, they're up at three 30 in the morning. Yeah. They're making up all the, all the shows, making sure everything's running and doing far more work than us. Way more, far work. more work than us. And Let's... Dave said, we've been blessed beyond measure. Yeah. I'm going to fly my whole team up to New York and we're going to take care of them for a night. Yeah. And so it's just that it's just, there's a generosity that's staggering behind closed yeah. doors. Um, this is pretty cool to be a part of. It is very cool, but just want to take that moment and kind of let you know what's going on. Let us know that we thank you guys for listening. If you enjoy the show, it means so much to us that you even have the grace and just to share it, that you click subscribe, all of that. It means so, so much to us. Not only does it help us, but it helps somebody else. Uh, they get the message out. They get the word. They get that 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 message that's going to change their money, that's going to change their mind, that's going to change their family. It's so, so, so important. Thank you. And with that, we're going to go to Manuel in Houston. H-Town. Tejas, what's going on? Hello, guys. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for calling in. What's going on? Uh, so uh, I'm actually in a big mess. Uh, so I have a backstory. I'm a star there, so you guys understand. Okay. Uh, about a year ago, I went through a really bad phase of uh, depression. Mm. And, well, I made some dumb mistakes that I'm now paying for. Um, I got myself into $70,000 of uh, debt. 
Mm. I purchased things I, I knew I couldn't afford, but I just didn't care at the moment. And, well, today I'm making uh, roughly about $20,000 a year, maybe a little less than that. I am working on getting my uh, a CD or my commercial driver's license so I can make more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, just, it's just really hard to get right now. But to break it down for you, I have about nineteen or 18000 in credit cards and uh, personal loans debt. Okay. I have... Uh, bought a car. Uh, it's a very expensive car. You guys are going to be so angry at me. <laughs> How much? It, it was fifty thousand dollars. I now own forty six thousand on it, and I also bought a motorcycle that I owe like five thousand on it. You owe five thousand on the motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. Um, which do you so, want to get first? Do you want to get John's take, or do you want to get Jade's take? You get to choose, but you're going to get both. Uh, either one. <laughs> All right, here's the deal, man. First thing, before you get going, I need you when this call is over to go look in the mirror and look yourself dead in the eye, okay? I need you to say the following. I screwed up, but I'm not a screw-up. The game changes right now. Okay? Yeah. I need you to repeat that over and over and over. I'm worth fixing all this stuff, okay? The funny thing, you calling me and Jade, 70000 bucks doesn't make either of us blink because we've both had way, way, way more debt than that, mm-hmm. okay? And both of us have gone through ups and downs. So, same team, all right? Um, the $50,000 car that you owe forty six grand on, that's sold by the end of next week, <laughs> right? Yeah, and after I sell in the car already, uh, I just owe so much money on it, and uh, they will only give me like 34000 Who? So Who? I don't have any money to uh, pay for the upside when down. You you looked on, if you look on kellybluebook.com, what's the car worth? Or have you done that yet? I, I've done it, yeah. Uh, $35,000. So it's worth thirty five. You owe forty six. so ten k upside down. Yeah. nine k. All right. Um, we're going to deal with that. We're still getting out of this car because – at this point, forty thousand is worth it to take a ten thousand dollar hit. So we're going to talk about that. Why, what, oh, real quick, why are you only making twenty thousand dollars, man? Um, well, uh, I don't know how to do much. Um, that's not true. I don't, I don't believe that for one second. Not that's, for one second. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah. Can you deliver pizzas? Yes. Can you drive Uber? Yes. Can you go find a construction site of all those building sites out in Houston and just throw brick? Yes. Hey. Yeah. Yes. You don't want to work. You're going to work tomorrow. Yeah. Right? And you think that what you know how to do is not important. And it is important because important. that's what's going to keep food on your table. That's what's going to pay off your debt. It is so important. Yeah, I, I agree. Are so you let's, in? let's change that. All right, hey, are you in, Manuel? Yeah, I'm in. Okay. We, be- we believe in you and we can't believe in you more than you believe in you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're locking that in. So... Twenty thousand dollars. I know you're working to get your 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 you know to, so you can drive trucks. Your CDL, yeah. But in the meantime, there's almost anything that you can do is going to make you more than twenty thousand dollars. McDonald's. If you're working forty plus hours a week, and I want you working. I mean, are you a single guy? Do you have kids? Uh, well, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> that don't <But> count. <laughs> that Bye, doesn't count, Felicia. And look, in this season. We're eating at home. In this season, it's McDonald's at home and it's BYOB because you don't have any money. <laughs> okay? And let her understand like, hey, right now I've got to focus on getting my life together. I don't have the money to do to, – I, I like you a lot, but I don't have the money to just be taking you out to whining and dining you. Not that you're doing that much anyway on 20000 but I certainly don't want you using a credit card to do that. So the game changes today. We're going to get another job, any job. I want you doubling your income in the next month or two. All right. And you can do that. We're doing that. That's a yes. All right. Yeah. Next thing is I want you out of this car. How's your credit? I'm guessing it's in the toilet. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. I completely destroyed my credit when I took out all these loans. And yeah. I'm actually it's payments already. I just can't afford to make those uh, to make some payments anymore on my credit cards and personal loans. Yeah, I need you. So are you current on the car or you're behind? I'm current on my car. Okay. Uh, just because I need the car, I'm, I live in a big city. I need to move around. Can yeah. you go sell that motorcycle this weekend for we, five thousand bucks? One hundred percent. I'm also upside down on the motorcycle. I don't care how much. How far? Uh, they only give me like three thousand or five thousand, so I'm like two grand upside. If I were you, I would try to get. I would try to find the difference 
Um, if you can't get a loan or a personal loan, I try again, this is the one time I'd suggest a credit card. See if you can find, you know, a 10 or $15,000 balance so you can get out of this car, give them the 10,000, clear the gap, then take 5,000 to get you a cash car. You're buying a car in cash, do your research, get the best car that you can get. And you're going to be $40,000 less in debt. Sound good. Yeah, and I, I mean, I've tried that already. I used to work at a dealership for like two years and um, I know how the, I know how that works. Uh, it's just that I, 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 there's no way nobody will give me a loan for that. Uh, I've tried selling it. I've tried getting a loan for so I can get another car and drive it around. But you know, I'm just too deep in the hole, I guess. All right. Then the next, the next play is I want you to look deeper into that. But the next play here is you've got to get your income up. Gotta go to work because man. at the end of the day, here's what here's what we know is true. You can pay debt off as long as you stop creating debt. You can dig yourself out of the hole. When my husband and I started out with debt, man, well, I want you to hear this. We made 30000 combined. We had $460,000 of debt. When I tell you things are possible, it's possible. But it demands you getting stupid on this debt. It demands you working so hard to get your income up. And I'm not talking about overnight. This is year over year, month over month gains. You're growing. You're getting better. You're earning more money. You're decreasing what you spend. And over time, your life is going to change. You're seeing the value in what you put out into the world. And that's what I need you to get out of this call. You can do it. When it comes to your money, you can tell me that you won't do it. But don't tell me that you can't. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I am Jade Warshaw, joined by John Deloney. We're taking your calls all afternoon, your life, your money, your mental health. Give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. We're happy you're here. We're happy that you trust us with your situations. Thank you for doing that. And uh, let's go straight to the phone lines. We got Carlos in Los Angeles, California. What's going on, Carlos? Hi. Can you guys hear me? We can. Oh, perfect. Hi. Well, actually, I can't believe I'm on this guy. I just you know, discovered you guys uh, like last week, last Thursday. Oh, yeah? The YouTube and the podcast. Yeah. So what do you think Welcome so far? Welcome to our crazy gang. Yeah. <laughs> and man, and I literally fall asleep like last week. And let me give you a backstory. So. I've been listening to you guys nonstop since last week. You know, I'm I'm 31, fiance is 29, and on Saturday we had a, a type of finances because I was listening to you guys. Mm-hmm. Hey Carlos, talk. And, uh, hey, hey Carlos, talk directly into your phone for me. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So I apologize. Um, so we talked about it on the site about like having a budget. Uh, maybe she was hungry at the time. Hey, Carlos. I can't hear you, brother. Are you are you on speakerphone? Hold on, Carlos. Carlos, can't hear you, man. Carlos! Carlos? Carlos, can't hear you, brother. We can't hear you. Hey, we might have to come back to you in a minute because we really couldn't hear you. Next time, uh, we'll get the call back, but get off speakerphone or wherever you were getting better service, and then we'll be able to help you out. Until we get Carlos back, let's go to Brian in Philadelphia. What's up, Brian? Yeah, how are you? Good. What's up? Um, so I just had a quick question. I don't really have any sort of um, issue with saving money, but my question is about uh, student loan debt. Uh-huh. Um, I got lucky with it, and I got half of my college paid for, and I went to a cheap school. Sweet. Um, so I only have about $12,500. Mm-hmm. Um, I have more than enough saved up where I could just pay that off and not have, you know, not have that debt. Right. But um, I have not been making payments on it due to the pause and thinking that maybe um, it'll be, it'll be canceled or at least $10,000. So my question is, 
is it worth just tackling and knocking out or is it a better idea to just continue making payments and Brian, um, do Brian. you love it? Does it make you feel warm? Do you love it? Do I love what? The loan. I do not love the loan, no. Like when nobody's around, do you go in like your room and shut the door and just hug it? Do you love it? <laughs> Brian, not. the dream of the dream of forgiveness died several months back. <laughs> Pay it off right now. What are you doing? <laughs> Pay it off. And and um I'm gonna say something and it might sting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Um, pay off your student loan and, and do it with knowing inside your heart, man, this is awesome that I have the money to pay this off because Mm -hmm. so many folks call our show and they don't have the money to pay it off. Not today and not for a couple, for several years on down the line. And when you wait out for forgiveness, people who didn't even take out student loans or have their own, they're fitting the bill. And so when you have the money to pay, pay so that other people who didn't even have student loans aren't going to have to pay through any type of who knows what will come down the pipe, you know, next election year or whatever. Maybe somebody's going to talk about forgiveness again. But always remember, nothing's free. Like first rule of economics, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? Everything costs and it costs the taxpayer. And if you're a person in this country that can pay the bills that they signed up to pay, pay it. You called the wrong two people because both Jade and I paid off hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'll tell you right now, Brian, if, if those if those forgivenesses went through and Miss Jade had to add that to her taxes, I'd be fired up because I already paid two hundred and eighty thousand. You know what I'm saying, Brian? Well, uh, yeah, the part about the timeline and, and I definitely got your answer uh, on that. And I kind of had a suspicion that you might say that. Yeah. Um, but I was actually about to pay it off. And then right when I was about to pay it off, the whole thing came up that it might just be forgiven. So yeah. I figured if I paid it and then it immediately would have been forgiven, I would have thought to myself, I should have invested that money elsewhere. But, you know, I totally get your point. Though. I think there's a bigger thing. There's, and I think we lose this. this I think we lose this um, globally. There is a, a psychological and in turn a physiological response to integrity, Mm. to standing up and keeping your word, telling the truth. There's a reason why truth-telling is woven into the fabric of every faith tradition in human history. You you walk differently. And when I was 18 and I signed up for all the stupid loans I signed up for, I had no idea what I was signing up for. Jade, I mean, none of us did. We were just doing the next thing that everybody told us. Mm -hmm. But... We both put our names on a piece of paper and said, if you help me get through school, I'll pay you back. You did too. And so I can see that you would have been like, dude, I got $10,000 more in my pocket. And, you know, we got bailed out by the government. Jade's right, number one. Anytime, any time a government agency bails you out, they will come knocking for a piece of flesh at some point. Mm-hmm. If you've ever sat in a history class, they will come back to your door and say, where's mine? So always count on that. But the big thing is, is you, you would be like, oh, man, I should have invested it. But I did what was right because I put my name on a piece of paper and I said I'd pay you back and there you go. Here's my money and I'm, I'm moving on to the next. And you know what? Thanks for that call, Brian, because we needed to talk about this with, with the people. Don't you think that everyone would like to open up their bills and go, ah, I'm not going to pay that. I mean, no one wants to pay their bills. Right. No one wants to give away money. Like, it doesn't feel good. And it doesn't, it's not fun. Especially right? when you didn't realize what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm saying it's, it's not fun to write your check for your car pay or, you know, pay online. I'm sorry. I just aged myself. No one wants to send that online pay, payment for their car, but they signed up to have a car payment. No one wants to send, you know, even though this is a little bit better, you know, your insurance payment, you know, and you're like, gosh, I never even use this thing. And it's not fun to give away your money. But when you sign up for something, you say that you're going to pay for it. And there is that piece of it that's there. And when it comes to these student loans, yeah, I, I can really get into this. Here's the thing. And I want to validate this because I felt that, John, I'm sure you have too. With student loans, is very different because you're looking around, you're going, yeah, I was 18. Somebody should have stepped in. Like, it would have been nice if some adult had gone, hey, Jade, you don't need to take out that much student loans because, you know, you've got a full ride scholarship. You don't need to take out student loans to get your hair done and go to parties and buy groceries. Like that's dumb, Jay. Don't do that. I would have loved if an adult did that. I would have loved if an adult stood and really explained compound interest to me when it's 
working against you. I would have loved that, but nobody did. I would have loved so many things to be different about that situation for the people to say, hey, don't put your loan on forbearance because when you do that, it's going to accumulate interest in you faster than you've ever could imagine. No one did that. And I can spend my whole life blaming them or I can go, oh, let me change my whole life. I can't blame my way to a better life. I've got to change the situation. Pay off your debt. Yeah, That's all that. it is, man. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 40% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com for more information. Listening to the Ramsey Show, I am Jade Warshaw, joined by best-selling author Dr. John Deloney, and I'm actually really excited, John, because you have a brand new book coming it's out. It's coming out Tuesday. Just a Tuesday? few days. Just a few days. That's right. Hey, I'm excited. Tell the folks about it. Building a non-anxious life in a society and a generation when we have everything, we're anxious beyond measure, mm-hmm. anxious beyond words. And so, wrote a book called Building a Non-Anxious Life, and it's um. It's exciting to say it's breaking all the internal pre-sale records, yes. and um, it's got just a couple more days. When it gets to Monday at midnight, the um, all the pre-sale goodies will be gone. And I think it's seventy-five bucks they say of uh, uh, free stuff that, that comes with it. Get online RamseySolutions.com or JohnDeloney.com and pick it up. And then come Tuesday, October second, October third, mm-hmm. yeah, third, October third, it will be in all the stores all across America Ooh. and everywhere else. But I'm excited, man. Let's get it out. Let's get it out. Let's That's get it out. exciting. So can I just ask something? Of course. What store, when this book comes out, what store are you like, I want to go see my book sitting on the shelf in this store? I was an old, like, man, I used to live, my wife and I used to live in bookstores. Yeah. And so going, like, seeing a book in Barnes & Noble is pretty rad. Or walking Ooh. by and seeing it in a Target is pretty cool. I mean, it's just, it's just see it, it's, it's just surreal. None of that's real. It's just weird. John, but I am excited, excited for you. That is super duper cool. Make sure to get your copy. I know I got mine, RamseySolutions.com. That's where you want to get it. Let's go to John in Washington. And by the way, if you want to take a call, if you want us to take your call, give us a call, 888-825-5225, and we will do just that. Without further ado, we got John in Washington, D.C. What's going on, John? Hey, guys. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we help? Um, so I, I, I had a quick question. So, um, so my wife and I, um, um, recently actually just paid off my student loan and Sweet. we're completely debt free now. Woo-hoo! except for our mortgage. Way to go. Yeah. That's a slow clap yeah, right there. You. Good job. Yes. And we, we've been, uh, listening to Ramsey's, um, uh, show for a long time. So, um, you guys helped turn my mindset around to do this the right way. Love that. Um, so on that note, like we're we were thinking about so we we currently own uh, a condo in this area, 
and um, we have a baby, and we're going to be putting her into daycare in about a month or two, and it's kind of expensive Mm -hmm. um, in the area. So, um, but we've also been looking at houses because we really want to own a home, but we are not sure if that is a smart idea. Um, uh, We make decent amount of money, Mm -hmm. but we're, we're not sure we can really afford it. And with the interest rates going up and prices just keep rising, we just feel like we're never going to be able to attain a home. And uh, we're not sure... We're just looking for some advice on what you guys think we should do yeah. and how we should plan for the next steps to hopefully own a home in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're asking all the right questions, and I think you've got the right uh, set of weights in place. It's like, okay, we got a baby. we got daycare coming up. Yes, we'd love to have a home. All great questions to ask. Um, my first question to you, because if we do do the math and figure out, yeah, you guys are ready, that's great. But I want to make sure that you've got a couple of things in place. Do you guys have an emergency fund, fully funded, three to six months of expenses? Yes, yes. We have um, um, we have savings, um, but, I mean, I just spent about, like, $40,000 to pay off my student loans. Okay, so what do you so have left? It, it, so we have about... Um, I'd say about fifty thousand um, in a savings account, okay. probably another sixteen stocks, um, and we probably have around another, um, I would say, eighty in retirement accounts. Okay, so you've got a hundred and ten. That's non-retirement, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Um, I would knock that down or siphon it off in your brain to whatever three to six months of your expenses are. So are you a person who you feel would need three months to feel comfortable of emergency expenses if one of you were to lose your job or six months? I would say six months. Six months. Okay, so if just quickly in your head, basic expenses, I'm not talking about a full, and by the way, for anyone listening, when we talk about an emergency fund, it's not your full budget times six. It's what you really need to just keep your home running, all right? If everything gets down to the wire, right? Only that, what you need to survive. All right, that doesn't include the restaurant budget and nails and, you know, if your wife gets her lashes done, that doesn't include all of that. It's This is your basic, what it takes, bare bones budget, three to six months. What would that be for you for six months? Probably like 20K, I think. Oh, only 20K, okay. Are you sure? Well, so like our mortgage right now is about like twenty five hundred, mm-hmm. um, and probably other monthly expenses. If we really have to cut back, probably could go to like five hundred to a thousand a month. Oh wow, y'all uh, are so. living, y'all are living lean. Um, okay, <laughs> put thirty in there for fun. Thank you. I was gonna say just for me. Can Let's, you keep it at thirty? <laughs> put thirty in there for fun. <laughs> Let's go with thirty. Sure. I'll feel better about that. Um, okay, <laughs> so thirty set aside. That gives you eighty thousand coming up. Uh, to start putting towards a down payment. Okay. So now what we want to think about here is how to buy a house to where it's a blessing for you and it's not a burden. All right. Which is you're going to have to do your research and I really want you to run the numbers. We've got on RamseySolutions.com, we've got a mortgage calculator you can check out or you can just Google um, how much home can I afford mm-hmm. Ramsey Solutions calculator pop up right there. But at the end of the day, here's what I want you to aim for, John. I want you on a 15-year fixed rate mortgage. Write this down. 15-year fixed rate mortgage. I don't want the payment to be any more than 25% of your take-home pay. Now, this is your take-home pay after taxes only, all right? See, that's the problem right now because I feel like that that payment that I would calculate. So, like, I've been listening to you guys. Mm -hmm. I know the whole uh, 15-year rule and all Mm -hmm. that. Right now we have a thirty year old a thirty year old uh, thirty year mortgage and our monthly with principal interest, taxes and everything, PMI mm-hmm. is like twenty five hundred. Right. And even that feels hard for us. <laughs> and that's um, I, I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, your payment your payment for what you get is going to be higher because you're cutting it in half. You're saying, I'm not gonna pay for a home for thirty years. I'm going to pay for home in 15 years. And if you do it our way, it's going to be even less. Do you know, let me tell you something, John, the folks who walk through our steps, they become debt free. They pay off their house in the next seven to 10 years. Because the goal here, the goal of everything we teach, this is not just for you, for anyone listening. The goal here is ultimate peace. And the way you get to ultimate peace is there's no payments. 
So we want you to pay off your home. If you get a 30-year mortgage, at that point, what you're saying is, I'd rather have more space. I'd rather have a bigger home. I'd rather have all of these things rather than having the peace of owning my home. Not to mention, when you don't have a home payment, do you know how freaking rich you're going to be? Because how much you're going to be investing every month? John, talk to him right. about it. Well, John, what, what do you do in Washington, Washington D.C.? Uh, so I'm an engineer, and okay. my wife uh, works for a, a company as a um, – she's a legal professional. Okay. So – this is a conversation that millions and millions and millions of Americans are having right now, which is this. We really wanted this particular job in this particular field in this particular city. It could be because we're, right. we want to be New York people. We're, we love the energy of D.C. We love the, the legal profession here. We love the X, the Y. Great. What we're telling you is the math doesn't work in your favor. And the question you and your wife have to ask, and it needs to be like in an intentional, fun, where let's go get breakfast together and get a sitter for the kids or for the kid. It's a dreaming conversation, but it's a hard conversation, mm -hmm. which is what do we want more? Do we want to have access to concerts four minutes away? And do we want to live by the subway? Do we like the quote unquote energy of the city or do we want a home? Because the world right. needs legal professionals. You're an engineer. You can get a job all across America, and you can cut your living expenses by two-thirds, right? And you can get a house for, for this, in some places, for half the, you know, you're 50% there um, with just your down payment, depending on what city and state you move to. So the harder question is, what are we willing to give up for this dream of owning a home? What we're telling you is, mathematically speaking, I don't care about how you feel about it because I know you want one. We all do. You cannot afford it given what you make where you live. You'll have to deal with that reality. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. Just, this is Jade Warshaw. This is John Deloney. We're taking your calls all afternoon. John, what's coming around the pipe? All right, we got two big things going on. October 5th, this is next Thursday, I'm throwing a book release bash. We're going to have punk rock music and singer-songwriters. and a po It's going to be it's gonna get off the rails. They gave me one hour to plan whatever I wanted, and it's going to be a blast. Um, we're going to have a... We're gonna have a about an hour program, and then I'm going to sign books and um, take pictures until every single person is ready to go. So um, that's October 5th. Let's up, um, go to RamseySolutions.com for that. And our first ever Money and Marriage Getaway, October 19th through 21st in Nashville. Yay, yay. Me and Rachel Cruz are going to equip you and your spouse with tools to cast a vision for your family, set goals, create a life that you both love. We're going to be talking about money. We're going to be talking about sex. We're going to be talking about everything that couples are struggling with right now. And we're going to have a ton of opportunities for you to get one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one direct coaching and conversations. It's not going to be us lecturing. This is going to be more conversational, more um, think think graduate school, not um, huge lecture hall, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be interactive sessions, and me and Rachel Cruz are going to be your guys to discuss communication, boundaries, sex, money, all of it. Tickets are 799 bucks. It's a whole weekend. It's wow. going to include a great fun event. Um, one, one of the nights, it, it's just going to get off the rails also. If you're out of debt, you got room in the budget, please come see us. RamseySolutions.com slash events. And we have couples who have been married a few months, and we have couples who have been married 20, 30 years who are circling back and say, okay, we want the back half of our marriage to be more awesome than our first half. And so we've got people from all over the spectrum. Hope you'll join us. RamseySolutions.com slash events. Mm, like that. Let's go to Detroit. We got Kylie. What's going on, Kylie? Hi there. Thanks hey. for taking my call. You bet. What's going on? Okay. So my husband and I are in a situation. Um, so right now we are just not making ends meet. 
meet, we're in the negative every month. And I'm trying to figure out if we file bankrupt or if we, I don't know, we don't see another way. So we're just trying to figure that out right now. So the bills that you have, we're not paying the bills that we have. And I'm assuming there's debt as well, right? Yeah. So we have that we can, so we we're paying our bills. We, we're not behind on like food, house, electricity, mm-hmm. any of our, we're, we're doing the taking care of ourselves. And you're paying um, minimums on the debt as well. Yes. Okay. Yep. So can you kind of list out the debt for us? Yes. So we have, um, 80,000 in student debt, Okay. which we're, we, we're not paying on and I'm in school, so it's all deferred. Um, not that doesn't exist, but are you still accruing? Um, hold on. Are you still accruing student loan debt? Um, I think technically it opens up this weekend, right? Um, no, I mean, you said you're still in school. So I'm saying, oh, are you still continuing to oh, take loans? Yes, to I pay am for getting, it? yep. Girl, we going to talk about that? <laughs> no, we're gonna, we're, we're, we'll talk about that. Let's take it one thing at a time, though. So, okay. so far, we've got the 80000 in student loans. What else? Yes. Um, and we have 30000 in personal loan. It's, there's 25 personal loan, and then um, another 5000 is credit cards. Okay. And so you're in school. Are you working at all while you're in school? I, I work um, part-time from home. We have four kids and we homeschool. Oh, wow. Part-time from home, four kids. You're homeschooling. What are you earning working part-time from home? Um, I bring home around 21000 a year. Okay. And what is your husband earning? Um, he is making right now, he just got a new job in his new degree field. Um, and he's only making 36000 a year. What is he doing? He's doing software support. So he went and like got his IT and coding stuff and he couldn't find a better job. Yet. When I hear what the coders yeah. are pulling in in this building, it makes me wish I'd gone to coding school. That, that's what we also <laughs> thought. But I mean, we would take any leads. Okay. okay. Here's when you tell me your income, my brain goes to the average income, the median income in America. And I, mm-hmm. my, I'm always striving to, to get people at least to the median, all right, which is around 67000 just to know, like, all right, I'm in the game. So yeah. I really want that to be your goal very, very quickly. Um, you got $115,000 okay. in debt. Um, if we want to make this needle move, the secret sauce here is getting the income up and running, like cranking. And the thing that I, the thing that I want you to understand is you're – you can't solve a problem while simultaneously creating it. And right yeah. now you're still adding to the debt. And so any movement that you make forward is going to feel futile. So mm-hmm. what I want to do is stop the bleeding. And so you're going, you're going to school now. What's the end game of this? Um, so I'm in my master's to be a licensed counselor. Okay. How much time is left and how much more money is being added to this bill? Um, how much time is left? Like three to four years. I'm doing very part time mm-hmm. and I, I honestly don't even know the end, like probably at least another 50. Can I say something really hard? Don't yeah. do that. Can I say it, John? I, 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 dude, I, I've got a PhD in counseling. I'm going to tell you, don't do it. I was a, do I was it. a graduate school professor. Here's why I'm telling you that 50,000 on top of the other 80 for a clinical mental health counseling Man. degree is going to be a nightmare to pay off. And dude, I was a graduate school professor. I need more counselors out there. I want people to go to graduate school and get their counseling degrees. Here's the deal. You're broke. Mm -hmm. Y'all can't Mm -hmm. afford this. And you got four kids. Yeah. You have to make some radical, hard, hard choices. Like we want the idea of homeschooling all four of our kids. Maybe they got to go to public school for a couple of years where we clean up the mess that the adults in the house made. Mm -hmm. My husband really wants to be a coder, but he can make about that much money being an assistant manager at McDonald's right now. He's going to go mm-hmm. find a job and a second one too. Y'all are in a situation and I think you want to have, I want to be a licensed therapist. Dude, I want that so bad for you. We want to homeschool our kids. I so badly want that for you. I want him to be a coder because they keep saying we're going to make $200,000. I want that for him too. Yeah. But the reality is those things aren't real right now. Mm-hmm. What is yeah. real is y'all can't breathe because um, you owe so much money. And let me tell you this, and I'm, you probably learned this in your grad school classes already. Your children absorb the tension in your home. Yeah. And if mom and dad can't pay bills, then mom and dad are struggling with each other. Mm-hmm. And those kids are absorbing that every second of every day. See what I'm saying? And so sometimes yeah. it's a dream deferred. Several times in my second doctoral program, I had to quit. I took off a semester because I had to take care of things at home. 
I had to take care of things with me and my wife. And so it may be the time. And there's going to be a state school that I promise you can get a great clinical master's degree that's going to be infinitely cheaper than what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to pay cash as you go. This, I know okay. it's hard, but I, you and your husband aren't being, you aren't dealing with reality. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't mean that yeah. like you're not living on the moon. Y'all just don't make enough money. And you want to do this mm-hmm. and you want to do this, you want to do this. Um, if you put all four of your kids in public school on Monday and you went to work full time, you instantly are able to breathe. Instantly. And if he says three of them are too young for school, but yeah. Okay, but you know, you, you get you get the sense yeah. of what I'm saying, mm-hmm. right? Um, and or you reach out to somebody at a local church and you get some help, mm-hmm. or you take your part time job and and you're, you look at your husband and say you're making thirty six grand. You were trying to get off the ground with this, great. And I know you want to be around with all four kids, great. But we have to have more money right now. Yeah. There is going to be okay. a sacrifice. There's, there's going to be a no trade. Way that there's not a sacrifice. There's going to be a sacrifice. Okay. There's going to be a trade, and that's based on what you say the priority is. I mean, we can say this is a money show, and this, you know, John's going to speak to the other side of it. But we're always going to prioritize what gets you feeling peace and feeling freedom first. And I think a lot of times people think, oh, like probably in your mind, you're like, oh, I'll get my degree, I'll be able to earn more money, and that was the path. But then you pull back and you're like, wait a second, this is just creating more like frustration, more debt, more chaos. And when that happens, you do have to stop and regroup and go, okay, what was the priority again? What was the thing? Because it can't, everything can't be A1. If everything's A1, then you start going crazy really quickly. Nothing's A1. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so something, something goes on the chopping block. And that's the really, really hard part of this conversation. Uh, Not just for you, Kylie, but for so many folks listening. Thank you for the call, because I think just by you sharing your story, it provides clarity for a lot of people. Because John... You're so right. You have to make hard choices. Very rarely in life do you get to just get all of it right. at once. Well, and you mentioned something goes on the chopping block. And if you don't want it to be your degree, it doesn't want you don't want it to be your career dream, it will be your marriage. Yeah. It will be your relationship with your kids. Yeah, it'll be your peace. Something has to pay the piper. Mm-hmm. And so let it be the adults in the house. That is such a good word. Uh, yeah, you got to make the sacrifice. And you know what? Sometimes I don't like the word sacrifice, John. I like to call it a trade. Because it's really, what are you trading? What are you getting in return? And when you say it like that, it has, I don't know, a better ring to it. This is The Ramsey Show. Show. I am your host, Jade Warshaw, joined by best-selling author, Dr. John Deloney, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show. Love to say that. And uh, I wanted to let you new folks listening know that if you're listening, number one, we're happy that you're here. But number two, you probably hear us talk about things all the time that you're like, hey, I'm new here and I feel like you guys are using some inside jargon, some lingo that I don't understand. Help me understand. And if that's you, I want you to go to RamseySolutions.com. And I want you to click that little get started button because that's where we're going to meet you where you're at. We're going to explain this whole thing to you. We're going to talk to you about the baby steps. We're going to explain what all that means. And finally, you're going to feel like you've come into the fold, the Ramsey fold, and you're going to go, oh my gosh, I get it now. I loved the show before, but I love it even more now that I understand all the things that they're talking about. So do that today. Go to RamseySolutions.com, click the get started button, and uh, we'll help you figure out your best next step here with Ramsey Solutions. That's amazing. In the meantime, let's go to Michael. He's in Scotts. Dale, Arizona. Michael, what's going on, buddy? Hey, I had a quick question for you guys. I was wondering at what point do you sell um, stocks and mutual funds to pay off baby step number two? Uh, I I made an oopsie last year, and we're probably about 65% over an individual stock purchase um, negative on that. But at what point do we just cut our loss, sell it, (laughs) pay off baby step two, and just move on? Yeah, what I'm were doing, you I'm doing, doing it. man. What? <laughs> what were you doing? Did you did you get like an insider tip? Or did you like read a magazine? No, absolutely not. It was an IPO opening, and I was like, oh, this is gonna do well, and it did not. But, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you put all you it, pushed it all a, your chips in on that trip. bet. <laughs> How big? Hey, I, I love the way you said. It's it like it's just an oopsie. So it was either <laughs> like a hundred grand or it was four thousand bucks. What was the oopsie? 
It was ten thousand bucks. I made an investment, and it's you know down to about four thousand now. So, oh. um, and how much is the debt? Yeah. Um, I've got about sixty thousand uh, in debt right now. Shoot. Um, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm, the way you framed it was as though if you st- sold the four thousand in stocks or whatever you, what it was in stocks, that that would be enough to clean up the debt. Is there more money? Because you also said mutual funds. Yeah, I've got mutual funds, uh, just some savings in general, probably of, um, with all that combined of maybe thirty five, forty thousand. Okay, and that's non retirement. So- non-retirement accounts so we're close to just paying off the debt and with our income we probably can clear it in the next you know six to eight months or so so i'm just trying to it's hard to let go of a loss like that yeah you know? so hard. maybe the market will go up but that's the whole game right it never does <laughs> or when you need it well to. in this so, case i mean over time it's going to go up and if this was sitting in a retirement account i'd be like yeah it's fine let it let it ride <laughs> but in this case you're trying to pay off your debt and so I would definitely say, go ahead and liquidate that money. There's going to be a tax implication on it for sure. But in this case, it's it's worth it to you to clear this debt. You're still going to have about fifteen, sixteen thousand left that you need to pay. And I, it sounds like you'll be able to cash flow that and get the rest of that out of your life pretty quickly. Yeah, it it, it is. Yeah. How, how much be- you said you and your partner ha- can do it in eight, uh, six to eight months? How much do y'all make? Uh, we ma- we own our own business. We make upwards of uh, about two twenty a year. Wait a second. Good God almighty. How do you not have this paid off by Christmas? <laughs> you know what? Um, I know because Michael's playing. Michael, you're over here playing games, aren't you? <laughs> Michael, you're playing games. You're like, I'm going to do a little of this. I'm going to do know, a little of so that. Hard. It's so hard sometimes to, you know, I don't know, just not hang on to it, right? And just yeah. kind of finally, you know, I just finally kicked in, um, you know, a few months ago of like, gosh, let's get this out of here. Yeah. Why is it sitting here? Why do we have this debt? Let's build, you know, this freedom and wealth. And, you know, so I'm just trying to. I, I, I would love to see you cash everything out and pay this stuff off this weekend and have a huge celebration. Mm-hmm. Like, do it right. I'm for real. And then you and your partner look at each other and y'all have um, October, November, and December. And say for Christmas, our Christmas present is let's owe nobody anything. Let's have an entirely free household. Mm. We're free. We are free. Hey, what's left to go on the mortgage? Uh, quite a lot. We purchased a home in uh, the peak of 2022, mm-hmm. and uh, but we we did gain a ton of of equity in our previous home, Good. and so you know we just kind of transfer that over. But uh, we do. We've got six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay, you make two hundred twenty-five thousand, so you're going to put that on a seven-year plan. You'll be done in five. Yeah, that, and and thank you, John, for getting to that because that's the picture that I want to paint for you going forward. Because I think you're a smart guy. I think you're a guy. I mean, you've got a great income. You've kind of been dibbling and dabbling here, and I kind of want to give you the framework for how you can do that in a way that's going to give you peace and make the most sense. I mean. Hopefully you're investing 15% of your income into retirement. Is are you doing that or more? Yeah, we are. I've got automation of our, you know, our business just pays into our Good. into our plans and I'm trying to automate that. I've already put in a thousand more towards principal of the home just to do it, you know, just to say it's starting to Good. go in that. And direction. let's be very but- intentional about that. I mean, over here we would say invest 15% for retirement and if you had kids, put some in the 529 and then you know, be intentional. It doesn't have to be everything that's extra going to the house. It doesn't have to be super intense, but be super intentional. You know, like you said, make it automated every month. This is the plan. Sit down with your wife. We're putting X amount of dollars towards the mortgage. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, that mortgage is going to be gone and you're going to have the extra money to play around with is investing more. And if you want to do single stocks, it's like, look, I, I've always talked to Dave about that. I'm like, Dave, when's the best time to do single stocks? He's like, look, if you want to play around with stuff like that, as long as it's no more than 5% of your total net worth, like whatever, knock yourself out. But I think it's good That's to only know when you that. have enough money to burn in the middle of the living room, right? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, exactly. <laughs> like but by, you did. Now. Like by you that did. Time, yeah. He's going to have money to burn. He's going to have, he's going to be a, He's going to have his home paid off at 600. It's worth 675 now. Right. So it's going to be skyrocketed yeah. by then. So does that, does that sound like more fun, Michael? It certainly, certainly does. Good, yes. good, good. I appreciate the encouragement and the extra push. Will you call uh, us back at Christmas on, on December 24th? We have a, we have a, like a show right before it just to do your debt free scream. 
I'm that challenging sounds, you. I'm giving you a 90 day challenge. Ooh. I appreciate that. I will. Um, I'll talk to my wife and we'll, we'll work hard to get that done. I no, would love no, that. No, that's like Yoda stuff. There is no try. <laughs> 90 days. <laughs> Come on, Michael. You make a quarter million dollars. Yeah. Do it. Do Look, thank you, Michael, for the call. And hey, keep listening because this next thing I'm going to talk about is kind of about you. <laughs> and not just you, Michael, but so many people. Let me tell you, the most dangerous place to be in, John, is when it, it, it comes in a couple of ways. In his case, he's got a nice income and his debt is there, but it's not rocking his world. It's not making him duck and run for cover, right? Or somebody who makes maybe $120,000 a year and they've got twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 of debt. It's not like, they're not shooketh, right? They're just like, oh, I've got this debt. It's a little annoying, but I'll that make it work. That was King James shook. <laughs> shooketh. They're not shooketh. <laughs> when you got Sam and Jade type debt to ratio income, you are under the ground. You're running for your life. You don't have a choice. Right. And so I, those, are, those calls are always the hardest because it's like, mm, I can bat it around the net a little bit longer. For now. For now. And those are the ones that you look up and five years down the line, 10 years down the line, suddenly it starts eating a hole bigger and bigger because you can't out earn bad spending habits. You can for a little while, but after a while it catches up with you and it's going to bite. It's going to take a big old chunk out of your booty. Can I say that online? You can't. Okay. And <laughs> you say probably whatever you want online. <laughs> but also I always, again, I always feel like I'm Debbie Downer. It just takes one shift in the market. Come one on. thing that, that Scottsdale it's decides one, to do one domino. with a regulatory issue and your business is over. Yeah. And you have a $600,000 mortgage okay. that was a great deal because you rolled $300,000 in equity into it. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. And now you've got 60000 bucks, and you can't eat. Look. Right? It happened. We would not have a show if it didn't happen. That's not going to happen to me. I'm an engineer. I'm a you AI don't know. is coming for you. I've got, I'm a this. It's coming for yeah. you. Right. So. Be very, very, I love how you say it. cancer is cancer. Whether it's a lot of cancer or a little cancer, you got to deal with it. You got to deal, deal with, with it, it because that thing will grow. And at the end of the day, really what it's about is the habits that you're forming. You know, when you say, ah, I know I can't afford that. But I can put it on the credit card. I'll be able to pay it off. Right. Those are habits that you're forming every day. And so what we're teaching, it's so that you ingrain better habits so that over time you're building a better financial foundation. It doesn't have to just be this one fell swoop thing. We want the daily choices that you make. Ah, daily choices. See what I did there? We want that to be what shapes your financial future. So that's how it works, Michael. Thanks for the call. You helped us. You helped a lot of other folks. Thanks for listening. That does it for this hour. We'll catch you next hour. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it is The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, we help them do work they love, and create actual, not fake, actual amazing relationships. I am Jade Warshaw, your co-host, joined by Dr. John Deloney to my right. We're taking your calls for the next hour. We'll talk about your life, your money, your mental health. You can give us a call, 888 825 Five two two five, and we will do our best to answer your questions. And number one, I'm always grateful that you guys even trust us with your life. Like you guys call in, you're willing to share your numbers, you're willing to share your deepest, darkest secrets. We definitely do not take that lightly. So thank you so, so much. And um, another thing that we don't take lightly, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, one of the things that you guys do that's so incredible that we're so grateful for uh, is you share the show. And my, I'm like, can you just keep doing that? If you like the show, click the little like button. If this has done something for you, subscribe. Or if you know someone that would benefit from the things that we're talking about in here every day, go ahead and, you know, share the episode with them. Slide them the little paper airplane so they can see it. Uh, send them a, you know, link, text it to them. That does so, so much. 
um, not only for us, it does a lot for us because it's great for the algorithm, but it does a lot for people because we exist here to help you guys and help people. And that's our great privilege and honor. So thank you for doing that. John, I'm ready to go to these phone lines because we got Allison in Toledo, Ohio. Allison, what's going on, girl? Hi, thank you for taking my call. We're doing good. How are you? I'm good. Um, so my question is, I have a daughter that's going to be going to college next fall. Um, the problem is she has been struggling with an eating disorder for five years. Hmm. Um, we've been through like numerous therapists, dietitians, residential stays. Uh, she's stable, but nowhere near recovery. Um, I don't want her to go to college, but her therapist thinks I need to just kind of let her go. And I can't make her recover. She doesn't want, that, want to do that herself. And I guess I'm just scared because I'm afraid she's going to go. And then she's, she's sorry. Yeah. Um, she's going to go and then she's just going to wither away. And I know I have a year away, but I'm just like terrified. And I just don't know how to deal with this. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, over, uh, over the last two two decades I've sat with a number of moms in your very situation. Okay. So you're not, you're not alone in that. It's hard. Um, and let's, I I always like to enter into these conversations, um, especially in this kind of format in a radio show, um, with as Uh much truth as possible. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. You and I both know that disordered eating is one of the, if not the most lethal mental health challenge, right? Right. It's not something to mess around with. And we also know that when our kids are hurting, we will do anything. And sometimes what we do ends up that we build fences. And in a Mm -hmm. weird way, that can make challenges for the growth and safety and development and healing for some of these challenges, right? And so it becomes this weird recursive, I don't want to be a part of the problem, but my therapist, the therapist is saying, I need to stop doing this, but I feel like I have to do this. And so here's what I would do. Um, okay. is there a risk of sending her away? A hundred percent. Absolutely. No question about okay. that. Anyone who tells you there's not, they're lying to you. Okay. Okay. And I have been a part of multiple teams at multiple universities from a giant R1 research institution with 35 or 40,000 students at it to mm-hmm. a small faith-based community and the other universities in between that with a parent and with a student and with the right care team, what made up of of a nutritionist and made up of uh, mental health providers on campus and sometimes medical providers on campus, there ends up being an amazing team. And then you throw in residence hall directors and the ability to make friends and get community. There is an opportunity. It sounds to me like you, A, have concerns about her health and well-being, which are all true. And you have a licensed mental right. health professional saying, in her professional opinion, this is the next best right move. That's number one. Number two, right. it also, also sounds like you need to do some work dealing with the opening of your hands and letting your daughter move to the next stage of her life, which is scary to do. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. And I actually have been seeing a therapist Great. the past month. And Great. I mean, she says that too. She does. <laughs> Good. So um, it's hard when <laughs> when a mental health professional tells me, a parent, uh, maybe you've got some stuff you need to work on. And I'm like, no, it's they're the ones with. And so follow follow the wisdom of the, of the professionals in front of you. OK. And I'm going right. to tell you to balance that with go with your gut. Moms, especially, but moms and dads are pretty intuitive. But if I'm sitting my kid and I'm in your situation, OK, I have a seven year old little girl. And I wouldn't wish it on her as you wouldn't wish it on anybody. But let's say I find myself in the same situation. What I would do is sit down with the college that my daughter's going to go to. And we would okay. sit down with the, there's going to be a care team, a student support and emergency team. There's going to be some group of people that have a 360 degree view of your daughter, academically, residence hall experience, mental health provider, et cetera. And we're going to create a plan and everybody's going to be a part of that plan. And a part of that plan will be the school will call you if they get really concerned about the health and safety of your daughter. Okay. Okay. So do you think a smaller school would be a better choice then? Um, I think there's going to be, I, I, I wouldn't say that because they may not have the resources of a larger school. So I don't, I don't know that, I think it's going to be very specific to your individual situation and where your daughter feels like she is going to be safe. 
and where she can have a good experience. Um, and here's the deal. I'm not special. Guys like me, men and women like me, all across the country chair these teams. I chaired one of these teams at several different places, okay? So if you can just imagine a knucklehead like me sitting down saying, okay, do we have the right therapist, the right medical provider? We've got the right people here. And then the work on the other end is let the professionals do their job. And mom, you do the work on opening your hands up and letting your daughter, who's now an adult, slowly transition into adulthood. Okay. Which stinks, I know. Did you want me just to say, no, keep her home, don't let her let her grow up? <laughs> Would that have been so no. much easier? No, I just, I've been trying to be so strong. We're going to college visits and I'm being like really excited for her, but like inside, I'm a nervous wreck. You can be both. Okay. And hey, I think it's fair to tell your daughter, I love you to the moon and back. And there's nothing in the world other than maybe your dad that I love more than you. And so I'm your mom. It's going to be hard on me. We're and it's, divorced. Oh, you're divorced. Okay. For, so, for now. so in many ways, she might have been your identity for a long time, right? Yeah. Has she been your purpose yeah. and reason for being? Yeah, she's been propping you up for a long time, and it's gonna. You have to tell her, I'm gonna have to work to let you go, and so it's gonna be hard for me, your mom. And it's not her job to make you feel better. That's not her job ever, ever, ever. That's your job to do that kind of work, right? Right. And so I would be honest with her. Be honest with her. She's smart. She's going to college. She's smart, and she loves her mom, and also. Um, trust the professionals in, in, in her world. There's going to be a whole team of them if you pick the right school. I'm proud of you for going to counseling on your own, too. This is a hard, hard, hard season you're going through. This is The Ramsey Show. Questions with your money, questions about your budget, questions about college choice, questions about mental health choices, you're feeling anxious about money, anxious about student loans coming back, if the national debt's got you feeling some type of way, if the debates have you feeling some type of way, man, give us a call. We want to talk about all of that. You'd be surprised at how all of these things filter into our choices that we make with our life and our money. And if we're not aware of that on down the line, we'll look up and be like, oh, my gosh, I've created a mess. So if any of those things are on your mind, give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. We'll help sort it out with you. It would be our great pleasure. Let's go to Matt in Mesa, Arizona. What's going on, Matt? Hi, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Hey, um, exactly what you were saying there. Um, some of those things, you know, inflation and costs. <laughs> Come on, it's real, right? <laughs> those, You're those feeling it. factor in. Yeah, they factor in. But mm -hmm. my questions um, specifically with Bitcoin, and I'll, I'll get to it, but where my wife and I are at is um, through Baby Step 4. So we're completing um, and contributing 15% to our retirement account. And then the next steps are obviously the 529 or college savings and paying off the house. Right. Uh, we're not there salary wise to start contributing to five and six yet. Uh, maybe in a couple of years with a raise, we'll start doing that. But we have about a Bitcoin in uh, it just saved up. So if you cash it out after taxes, it'd probably be worth 20 K. Mm -hmm. Would you, my, that's my question for you um, relating to Bitcoin. What would you do with that Bitcoin in the situation that, um, that I'm in. Are you guys? How long have you hold? It? How long have you had it? Since 2015. Has wow. it been so fun? Yeah, it's been a roller coaster. It seems like it's been like more of like a backyard slide. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like just directly you know, from top to bottom. I'm just glad you're I, ready to get out of it, dude. I would sell it before the day was over. Most definitely. And um. You know, you're you're contributing the 15% to retirement like you should be. Um, I'm not mad at you guys 
using that and kind of putting a, a chunk into the 529 if you wanted to do that, because that is important. How many kids do you have? We have a four-year-old. And oh, just the one. You know, another one next year, which might be some of that savings if, if we cash it out. Mm -hmm. Some of that bring all the kids. Yeah, when it comes to the 529, uh, we don't have as many hard and fast rules on the amount that you have to contribute and how often you should contribute and all those things. Because the fact of the matter is everybody's situation with their kids when it comes to their education is going to be different. And you're at the stage where you really can't predict it at all. Like, you know. You don't know if they're going to grow up to want to do Ivy League or if they're going to do the trades or if they're a musician and they just want to rock out. You like you don't know what that's going to be. And so as the parent, it's really up to you to choose the best option. I don't know that I would start with 20,000. That just feels like a lot. And once you're in it, you're kind of locked in. Now, not obviously down the line that money can re can you know convert into retirement money and it can go to different siblings so that's a conversation between you and your wife i do want you to be contributing something into that 529 but also know that four five and six um if possible should be done simultaneously so i'm not mad yeah. at the idea of taking some of that money and putting it into the 529 to get it rolling and then taking the rest of it and throwing it towards the mortgage how much do you owe on your mortgage um, 235. 235. You know, that's up to you. There's not a wrong answer on this. If it were me, if I woke up in your shoes, if I woke up in your shoes, I might reverse engineer it a little differently. I'd probably throw like a thousand into the 529 and be like, okay, every year I'm going to put X amount of dollars in. And I'd probably put the bigger chunk toward the mortgage. That's what I would do. And maybe even have a contest with your wife and see if y'all could get down to where it was. 199,999 bucks before Christmas or something like that. Mm -hmm. It just feel good, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, when you get to yeah. when you go, get below the zero zero, ooh, yeah, you yes, start making John. those moves and so I, I that's that's probably what I would do. How, what what did you okay. buy into Bitcoin? What was your initial buy in? Uh I bought half for 300 bucks. Okay. And then a whole one for 1500 bucks. I, I already got my money back. Okay, you're good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I love that you're just willing to sell it. I think that's the right move as far as what percentages to put where. I don't think there's a wrong answer, but I think I don't think there's a wrong answer. In my mind, what feels a little bit more wise, I hate to use the word wise, what feels like there's less um, unknown, let me put it like that, is you know you've got to pay your house off. Um, you know, right. you, that's, that's a given, you know, you want to have some money set aside for some further education of your child. You don't know what that's going to, going to be yet. So it's not like we have to have 150,000 set aside for school. You don't know that, you know? So right. there is some thought with that. You might say, Hey, we're going to put 20,000 in, we're going to set it and forget it and let it grow. And what it is, it is. So those, it actually sp sparks um, Matt, some bigger conversations about education and you and your wife sitting down and going, okay, what's our goal here? Uh, the 529 is great. Yeah, we want to add to it, but what are we saying we're going to contribute? Are we saying we're going to match them dollar for dollar, regardless of how they further their education? Is our plan that we're going to fund whatever yeah. that thing is 100%? is our plan yeah. is, you know, so I think that's honestly the first conversation. And then whatever you guys come away from that conversation will uh, lead you down if you're going to put most of it towards a mortgage or put most of it towards yeah. the 529. And I'll say this too. I spent most of my career in higher ed and I've got a 13 year old who's just a few years out and I've got a seven year old. I am, I have not a, a single doubt in my mind that what I know to be college and the university experience right now will be different for my seven year old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where we're at. We're conflicted on, um, what to do in that situation. So I, I think you're right. It makes more sense to, with any extra cash, pay down the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even having grandparents that would more than likely step in to help pay for some of that college for a grandkid. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't not, count not on it. On that, yeah. But, yeah, not planning on that. But um, like you said, not necessarily wiser, but maybe the more for sure thing is to pay down the mortgage. So. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. start with that conversation with your wife, like set the expectations so you know what the goal is, because it, it's, yeah. you know, sometimes with this stuff, we just start throwing darts and it's like, hey, I know I'm supposed to do something like that. And I know I'm supposed to do something like that. And it's like, yeah, throw a thousand dollars in there, throw five hundred dollars in there. 
But what really motivates us and what really makes us feel awesome about what we're doing is when we know exactly what we're aiming towards and why. Yeah. And why. Then as you get closer, it's like, that's freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. Like we're really doing something. Yeah. So that's what I'd say, Matt. Yeah. Feel good about it? Thank you. Yeah, I think the the mindset has changed after having a kid and just kind of settling down a little bit where we want to have more peace with our finances mm-hmm. and yes. being, you know, kind of no kids or uh, before that single. And, and I've never needed the Bitcoin, but I think that's it, it's hard to have the mindset of, well, it's so volatile, it could go up 200000 and it could also go down. And so I don't really want to sell it, which yeah. is kind of why I'm calling in. <laughs> yeah. But uh, having peace with, with finances is probably more important for us. So I'll I have that confirmation conversation with my wife and, and uh, go from there. I, I think it's, that, I think it's worth it. Look, you guys are out of debt, number one. So it's not like I'm like, sell this to get out of debt. Um, what's your net worth, by the way? Like, what do you, what else do you have invested? I'm just curious. Uh, good question. Um, Beanie babies. We, we always say like things like this, Bitcoin and, and single stocks and, Um, little things like that that you just are dabbling around in. You don't want that to be more than 5% of your big picture. And you certainly don't want to be putting money into those things currently until after baby step seven, until after you're, you know, doing all the, doing all the important things, right. Then it's like when you have money to play, if you have money to play, um, you might do stuff like that. But the way it sounded, um, you, I feel like when you first called in, you said, Hey, we've got the money to do baby step four, but we don't necessarily have it to do five and six. And so I think yeah. that right there was the the dial that you turned. That's like, okay, then it's it's time to sell this off. If you were like, hey, we're just rolling in the dough. Should I just go ahead and sell this too? I'd probably be like, eh, who cares? <laughs> but because it does yeah. matter to you and it matters in your world, I definitely would sell it. I think you're making the right choice. I love these conversations, John. Yeah, and I, I never want people to forget, if you don't have a mortgage, you can go a long way to help cash flowing part of college too when it comes Facts. around, right? Oh yeah. I mean, that's all that money freed up. Just freed up money. The that's mortgage right. is the biggest piece of people's month to month income. And it's one thing when you go from renting to ownership and it's a whole other thing when you go from ownership to no payments. Like I literally own this free and clear. You can help cash flow a community college with no problem. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. This is The Ramsey Show. What's going on, people? It is The Ramsey Show. I am Jade Warshaw, your host. I got John Deloney on the ones and twos to the next to the next side of me. Remember that when they used to say that? I do. I do on the ones that. and twos. I don't, even, I don't even know what that means. I guess it just means that you're... Uh, I thought it was the turntables. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The yeah, ones yeah. and twos, though? Yeah. Okay. Clearly, I've never worked a turntable. Um, I have John two Deloney turntables has. and a microphone. Where it's at? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Yes, I got that, John. I that was got huge that. Right there. Okay, that was I know time. about Beck. I know what's going on here. We're gonna go to Michaela in Honolulu, Hawaii. Michaela, what's going on? Hi. Yeah. So I'm just trying to see if I can figure out a plan to help me and my family get out of um, like living paycheck to paycheck. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You're living in one of the most expensive places on the planet. Is it rough? Yes. It yeah, it's rough. Um, but there's no no room to leave. Like I'm not leaving. This is my home. So I just have to figure out what to do next. Mm. Um, can you give us a little that. bit of a? Can you give us a a big picture of what's going on? Can you tell us what the debt is? Can you tell us what the income is? We'll help you out. Yeah. So my husband has about twenty thousand dollars in student loan debt. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm at home with two kids, so I can't really work. Um, How old are the kids? And then he, um, five months old and two and a half. Okay. Yeah. And then um, he makes about like 50000 Okay. Um, he just finished his degree. Um, so like he's looking for more jobs. And he got offered a management position at his job so uh-huh. that he doesn't leave. So there's potentially more money coming in. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's not going to be significant enough to really make a dent. 
if you know what I mean, at first. Yeah, well, I mean, what are we talking? He goes from 50 to 55, or he goes... Right, yeah. Okay. That's right. And so just the 20000 in student loans, is there anything else? No. Okay. Um, 20000 in student loans feels like a lot when you're making 50000 Um, Mm -hmm. 20,000 in student loans feels a lot better when you're making 70,000, 80,000, right? right? So what we need to do is we need to open that gap a little bit. Cause right now it's like, man, this is almost half of my income. And in the United Mm -hmm. States, you know, the median income is somewhere around 67,000. And I really, really, really want to get you as close to that as possible. So you're staying home with the kids. Mm -hmm. I got to believe there's something in this internet age I believe, I know, Michaela, there's something that you can also be doing to bring in some money, right? Obviously, you're staying home with the kids because you're like, hey, it's too expensive to put them in child care, right? Did I guess that right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's also just I can't let somebody else watch my kids, too, you know? Well, well, hold wait, on, hold wait on, a minute, hold wait a minute. minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've told me you can't move. You've told me you can't let somebody watch your yeah. kids. you told me you can't work. And then you're so calling I, us. At- I've started a. No, I've started a business, so I'm trying to work with something that I can bring my kids with to sell at uh, our markets and stuff here. Yes, that's um, good. Can I got to cut yes, you off. Yes. That's good, but we need money today. Yeah, you're you, you're, you're right. drowning with your ideas. With the mm-hmm. way things like your uh, your your non-negotiables are burying you guys. Mm-hmm. You don't have enough money. Right. And so you're going to have to, you and your husband have to give, uh, he wants to have this management job. Cool. I need you to go to McDonald's and work the night shift because mm-hmm. I'm sure not working. So you're going to have to work two jobs or three jobs, or mm-hmm. I'm going to start seeing, keeping three of my neighbor's kids over at our house. But when, right. when you go into a problem as desperate as you're in, we can't make the bills. And those little kids are absorbing your husband's tension and your tension and your frustration. And you go in with a whole bunch of can't do that, can't do that, can't yeah. do that, can't do that. That's a tough way to solve a problem. Well, you're cutting you're cutting the legs out from under you. And it's not just you, Michaela. We've been having this conversation all afternoon with different callers. Everything doesn't get the mm-hmm. yes. Like everything doesn't get to stay. You do have to go through and go, hey, yeah, everybody. Look, I'm a, not everybody, but most parents have the ideal scenario for their kids and that's what they want. I would love, you know, I wish I could bring my kids to work and I could see them all day every day, but I can't do that and do this job. Uh, so there's there's a give and take there. Um, when Sam and I, my husband and I were getting out of debt, I wanted to be able to do what everybody else does, which is, you know, you come home after a long, hard day, you know, you, you order a pizza on a Friday, you watch Netflix. I didn't get to do that because we had to pay off our debt. And so there's mm-hmm. part of this that you just go, okay, I have to make changes and they will be painful. And I want people to hear that. It doesn't feel good when you're paying off your debt. It sucks. It hurts. You sacrifice, you strain, and you push yourself to limits that you're like, man, I don't feel like the guy next to me has to push himself to the type of limits that I'm pushing myself to. But at the end of the day, you turn into a different person. And that is that is the prize, Michaela. That's at the end of this. You turn yourself into a different person. Number one, that person's debt free, right? But number two, no one can hold a candle to and no one can tell you anything other than, man, like you're confident. Like you can do what you say you're gonna do. You can do hard things. You know how to prioritize. You know how to spend your time wisely. That builds something in you, Michaela, that is going to be so priceless and so important throughout other, because there will be other storms in life. And this is going to create that well in you that you're going to be able to dig from and pull from and go, hey, remember when we did X, Y, Z? Remember when we doubled our income? And remember when we just fought like dogs to get our income up? Remember when we sacrificed everything and we paid off that debt? No one can take Mm -hmm. that from you. And so when you guys sit down and you say, okay, what are we going to sacrifice? What are we going to do? Are we going to do something with the kids? What does that look like? Am I going to get, ex- am I going to put this dream? Am I going to defer this dream of whatever the business you have for just a minute so I can make some money today? It is going to be so, so worth it because when you get to the point and you will get to this point, Michaela, when you can keep the kids home and when you can do some of the things that you want to do, it's going to be that much more worth it because you worked and sacrificed and scrapped to get it. How much, how, what's the minimum wage on Hol- in Hol- Honolulu right now? $12. I $12. think it's 11 actually. 11 What, um, there, I mean, we could drive up. I worked up- at a restaurant up until I had my 
child. Okay. Um, here's yeah, what, here's so. what I'm wondering. What does October 1st through March 1st, what is six months? Mm-hmm. What is six months of a family member, a friend, someone from your church, or even a local daycare center? Watching your kids, six months of you grinding it and hating every day of it. Mm-hmm. But you grind it, and then after at March first, you don't owe anybody any money, right? And then you are able to sit with your kids and be fully present without that dragon hanging over your shoulder. And then by that time, your husband's moved from his management position, where it was just a little bit of a raise, mm-hmm. to another position on the island somewhere. Mm-hmm. And what you're talking about is six months, and it feels like a hundred years when you're holding a five month old. But when I'm, th- I have a thirteen year old now. And I made some sacrifices when he was young Mm -hmm. that allow me and him to do some incredible things that never would have happened. When me and my wife sat down and she said, are you seriously going back to school? And I Mm -hmm. said, I think I have to. And I don't know why, but I think I have to. No idea that there was such a thing called a podcast and YouTube didn't exist, right? At least in any any way that I knew about it. And so there's something about saying, I'm just going to suck it up for a season for right now so that I can do these other things. When you get that money coming in, it's going to change your life. When you get if that you debt can, off your shoulder, it changes your life. You you find tw- you find a way to make twenty thousand dollars. You know you can live off fifty, so you're out of debt in a year if you can make this work. And hey, before you get off the line, we're going to give you every dollar. That is the budgeting app that we created here at Ramsey Solutions. It's the only budgeting app that I use. Back in twenty fifteen, when my husband and I were in the thick of it, Ramsey was like, "Here you go." We made every dollar and we made it to make this easier for you. And I've never looked back. We use that thing. It's so helpful. It helps you plot your goals. It helps you see where you're at. And by the way, Michaela, I'm going to be doing a webinar um, on October 10th. It's at 1130 Central Time where I'm going to really walk through paycheck to paycheck living, how to break that cycle, like specifically the things that you're talking about. So I really want you to tune into that webinar. Um, Please, please, please make it a priority and be there. It's going to help you. It's an hour long. It's a lunch break. Uh, And anybody else listening, it's open to the public. I would love for you guys to sign up for my webinar again, 1010. We're going to be going through the Every Dollar app, making sure you guys really have a handle on how to use this thing, how it's truly going to help you break that paycheck to paycheck cycle. It's so important. I'll see you there. listening to the Ramsey show. I am Jade. He is John. We are taking calls about your life and your money. The scripture and quote of the day, it says Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes four, nine through 10. He says two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them. That's a word right there. Then Linda Grayson said this, there's nothing better than a friend unless it's a friend with chocolate. Look, I ain't mad at that. I could use a little chocolate right now. John, if you're my friend, hey man. you'll find some. <laughs> I would love some chocolate right now. We don't have any. Um, you know, I'm looking at the scripture, Ecclesiastes. It says, but pity the one who falls and has no one to help them. And it's kind of funny. You and I were talking during the break. John, we get calls all the time. And that, I mean, that's what it, you, you call in. Right. And you're hoping that we can shed a little light on your situation. You're hoping that we can say a couple of things that's going to put you on the right track. And, and, and sometimes, John, folks call in and they've already got a laundry list prepared of a what they're not going to do and b why it won't work. Right. And three, what they can't do and what they can't do. And here's the thing. And I said this to John during the break. I'm just being candid. If you call in and you say, oh, you know, here's the thing. I can't, I can't earn more. Um, I can't move. I can't uh, sacrifice this or that or that. What would happen if I just went, oh, oh, okay, cool. Well, sucks to be you then. What if I just, you would not be okay with that. 
you would go, well, what kind of show is this? You guys are <laughs> supposed to give me advice. You guys are supposed to help me move forward. But here's the deal. It only works if you believe it works. If we give you a laundry list of things, hey, you could try this, you could do this. Uh, here's what worked for me. Here's what worked for John. And we're giving you real life experience. It's not a theory. We didn't just pull something out of our butt and go, hey, try this. You know, it might work for you. We're telling you time tested uh, techniques when it comes to money, when it comes to life, things that not only worked for people out there that you might not know or have ever heard of, but we're, we're people right here in the studio who are telling you, hey, uh, look, we sacrificed. We slept on an air mattress. John pulled himself in and out of school. He made sacrifices to make it work for his family. We're telling you that and you can either take it or you can leave it, right? You lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But here's the thing. You came here for a drink and we're trying to give you that. And um, the belief thing, it works either way, right? Whether you believe something works or you believe it doesn't, like that's your choice. So the things that we have for you, the resources that we have for you, you can make it true for you or you can make it false for you. You can say, hey, like I believe this or I don't. And there's a big part of that. Like you've got to, you've got to connect to that and you've got to stop saying, I'm the exception to the rule. Well, and there used to be a cultural ethos of we can do anything. Yes. We can go to the moon. We can, we can go liberate Europe. We can go fight this war. We mm -hmm. can do these things. And now our cultural ethos is y'all can't. You can't. It's too hard. It's too hard. Someone's got to come get you. You you guys have too much pain. You, you just, you can't. Mm -hmm. And and Jade, I, There's I- There's too much standing in your way. I hear, I'm frustrated by that ethos of you can't. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've just had the privilege for 20 something years sitting with people who have scratched and clawed and figured it out. And it's amazing to watch them. And I'm frustrated by those who say- well, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. I mm -hmm. can't. I can't drive a Corolla. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can't. I can't just go go to work. Yes, you can. I just can't drive in the morning before work and then deliver pizzas at night. I yes, you can. There's always something you can do to better your situation. Always. I don't care if it's just an inch forward. You keep compiling those inches, and before you know it, you will have it's moved steps and bounds yes. and miles further. You can, and even if you can't move, you can you can reach out and say, "Will you help me?" Absolutely. Will you help me? Will you help me? And there will be an army of people there. It's just this. But you have to receive the help, John. Right. I know. Yeah. It's it's a culture of disempowerment that is so heartbreaking to me. Mm -hmm. um, we had that last caller, and I just want to tell her, I know you have this vision for your life, and that's awesome. And I actually think you can get there, but you're gonna have to stop saying, "Well, I can't do that, and I can't do that, and I can't do that." Yeah. Because you're canting yourself into a miserable, miserable place. Yeah. And and the thing is, we can all, we can all look at our lives and find reasons why it won't work. Right. Like I could look at myself, I could be like, well, I, I, I went to high school in a small town. Um, I'm black. Uh, I'm a female. It's harder for women to get ahead. Um, you know, we've got this debt. Uh, we're just musicians. Musicians, you know, it's feast and famine. You know, you're a starving artist. You can make all of these assumptions about yourself and cause them to be true. It's almost like, uh, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like you're in a moment and the moment sucks. Like, let's be honest. Like sometimes you can be in a moment and it does feel like the walls are closing in on you. But the more you rehearse that in your brain and continue to say it's true and have no vision for the future, I say it all the time. Words matter. Brene Brown says, whatever you go looking for, you're sure to find. Yes. Yeah. She says that. Yeah. I say it too. And I know it came from somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, but, it's, it's, but it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Like if I go looking for opportunity. Yes. We were talking on, on the plane today on the way on the way back from New York when you said, you and Sam sat down and said, if this is going to actually work, we got to start a business. We have to, yes. We got to figure it out. We're going to yeah. start a business then. And it's like, okay, what do we know how to do? We're musicians, so let's figure this out. And But it's a matter of, hey, Sheila, when we're doing it, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to start adjuncting classes and I'm going to have to become a professor on top of my dean of students roles. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to take this because we got to get out of this mess. Yeah. And she's like, I'm going to lose you. And I was like, you're going to lose me either way. Yeah. At least this is our path of, yes. of loss, right? Yes. And you grind and you grind and you grind and you grind. And then the sun comes out. It does. And But what you said, John, is really important. I don't think people take enough time to look forward and dream. People don't take enough time to go. They're in the moment and they see where they're at right now. And it's like, uh, this is just, this is me. This is my life. This is how it is. And I'm like, no, let's take a moment and let's zoom out for a moment. In 10 years, in 15 years, where would you like to be? Right. Taking that time, some 
taking time to just stare out of a window and think, you know, what would it be like if? Mm. What would happen if I had that conversation with my spouse? What would happen if we paid off both of our vehicles? Like, what would that feel like? Taking the time, and I challenge anybody today, take some time and dream. Think about how your life could be better. Write down a couple of ways. Right, and then write down what must be true. Because let me tell you something, uh, John, with Sam and I, you know, for anybody listening for the first time, real quick, $460,000 of debt coming into our marriage from student loans and cars and everything else. And um, I knew I wanted, not early on did I know I wanted a family, but a little further in, I'm like, man, I want a family. This is never going to happen. You know, like I want to be, I had this dream of like, I want to be the type of mom who can, you know, go to the field trips and be there to pick their kid up. And, you know, I, I just had this very clear vision and I was so, 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 so unbelievably far from that. And it broke my heart. And I remember saying to my husband, I'm like, I can't, like, I can't bring kids into this. Mm. Like, we've got to clean up this mess. We will be bringing them into such a mess. And there was other things going on as well, too. And I remember sitting down and just being like, okay, what's got to be true for anything that we want in life to happen? Because this right here, it ain't it. And this is not working. And we're so worth more than this. And that's a hard conversation. But once you have it, it's like, okay, there's the North Star. Let's start reversing, reverse engineering this thing backwards. What's got to happen first? And then honestly, enough people don't sit down with pen and paper and literally write down what has to happen A1 first. And if, if you don't have a map, it's really hard to... F what's, that, what's that old saying? If you don't have a map... Um if you, if you don't know at, where you're going, you're sure to you're sure to get there. Oh right? yeah, yeah. You just you meander around. Yeah. If and, you aim if you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. That's right. So, yeah. I if you hear us say anything, folks who are still listening to this, you can. You can. When you think you can't, and it's it's two in, two a.m. and you're exhausted, and you just looked at your credit card balance, and you're in bed with somebody that said I do, and y'all are so far apart from each other and your kids don't want to be around you, and you think, I'm out, you can. And it's a little bitty step, and sometimes it's reaching out and saying, I don't know what to do next, will you help me? Please go make that call, make that step, and then go get it. Go get it. Go do it. Look, we are normal people. All of us are out here scratching and clawing. If John can do it, if I can do it, I know it sounds cliche, but you can surely do it. You can tell me you won't do it, but do not ever tell me you can't. You can do this. All things are possible. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.